Alabama defensive coordinator Pete Golding arrested and jailed for DUI in Northport, Alabama, just outside of Tuscaloosa, about 1 a.m. on Thursday morning. Uh, in a, I haven't seen a coach at Alabama run into something like this. I have seen players do this, and they keep it all internal, and they go through, and some of them get suspended for a game, and some of them get suspended for like four games, and some of them don't get to start for like half the year, but they get to play. Like, There's a lot of different things because they leave it to a committee of their peers. The students or the student athletes that are on the team get to decide the fate of their teammates. In this situation, I don't know that you do that. And and Pete Golding has kind of been on the hot seat here and there, but Alabama's defense has been really, really good the last couple of years. Uh, last year had a few spots here and there, but you're going to have that in modern football. I'm curious... What do you think ends up happening here? Because I, I have no idea how Nick Saban's going to handle this. Um, I, I think I figured out how Nick's going to handle it by the fact that he actually got arrested. Yeah, at normally think, in a situation... I think, I think like, that tells you everything, by the that's way. A, that's a very good point, because if if it's anybody else, if it's... Because I think Nick's phone rang about 105, 115, and I think Nick said, I'm not dealing with this tonight. Put him away. I'll deal with it in the morning. And and I think that's your answer. That that's your yeah. that's your answer right there. I believe that. I don't think because, you're wrong. Because if Nick says I'm sending somebody to get him, we don't hear about this at all. He never gets arrested. It never comes out in the news. Nobody ever knows it happened. I I think you might be onto something. All I can hear right now in my brain as soon as I saw that was was Jeremy Pruitt, former defensive coordinator at Alabama, while a head coach at Tennessee, telling Knoxville Police Department, do your civic duty, man. Do your <laughs> civic duty. And trying to get a kid off for uh for for some misdemeanors. Yes. So, uh, so that's 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 how that's how Pruitt learned things work in Tuscaloosa is is you just do your civic duty and you take care of the program. And uh and when he was not taken care of, I think we have our answer. I think you are probably onto something. Probably onto something. And it'll probably be a little bit because what they've done here lately, it's it's a little strange. You know, they hired in Kentucky's offensive line coach, but they never announced that Doug Marone was leaving. Like it's so a lot of these situations you might just hear, Oh, Alabama is targeting so and so for their defensive coordinator position, and it's like Okay, well, what happened to the other guy? And you just never hear. Like <laughs> this is this is what Miami look. Miami they learn this shit from Alabama. Like like we're just gonna hire somebody while somebody else has the job. And when that guy shows up, you know this is you know it's like Joe Pesci in in in, in the Goodfellas. You know you just show up for a meeting and you don't go home. Yeah, all right. Well, it's much the same way. We've seen it on the opposite end of the spectrum as well uh, with Dan Enos who went to be the offensive coordinator at Miami a, a few years ago for Manny Diaz and never told Alabama, uh, never told Saban, anybody. Saban actually showed up and said, hey, where's Dan? Like, because he didn't show up for a meeting and but you his stuff was already cleared out. But you don't, but you don't think, you don't think Nick set that standard? Oh, I think so, and that's what I'm saying. I think the reason Edo's felt comfortable just ghosting everybody is because he knew the, when the day comes for them to replace me, they're just going to ghost me. They're just going to one day I'm going to be in the job, and then I'm going to hear Alabama's hired a new OC, and then nobody's going to hear from me again. And he was – so he was the quarterback's coach. So this was actually a, a step up, but, but I'm trying to remember who – you know what I'm saying. Yeah, like, I know. Yeah, I get what you're this saying. This is how yeah. that stuff works at Alabama. And, and I've never seen anybody else do this other than Miami this year. Yeah, I, I don't think you're wrong. I don't think you're wrong. And now Jacksonville with their G, GM, where they were they were trying to hire this GM dude. I'm like, wait a minute, have they fired that guy that, that Byron wanted them to fire? No. Oh, nope. Nope. He's and as a matter of fact, that that news came out that it, which again, Byron probably not going to be the coach now. It certainly appears that way um, because he wanted Trevor Bauke fired, and now the GM is apparently going to hire an assistant GM 
to handle more of the stuff in office, handle more of the scouting, etc. While he tries to be more quote unquote hands on. I wish so with bad. The I wish so bad I had a job where I was powerful enough to hire somebody else to do my job. And then it's I just unreal. gotta watch and make sure they do it right. Yeah, it's so somebody ridiculous. else's money, and they just do it right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. oh yeah it's ridiculous all right let's go on and get out of here uh go over to winning cures everything.com go to betus.com betustv.com make sure that you are subscribed where you need to be subscribed thanks for listening to the winning cures everything podcast the website is winning cures everything.com and if you want to connect with us we're on twitter at gary wce at chris b giannini at winning cures or you can email us gary at winning cures everything.com or chris at winning cures everything.com Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.